can we agree by now that the culture wars are a psyop? That if I am on the left side of the war fighting the right, or on the right side of the war fighting the left, I am serving the same masters of separation. None of us are served by this. We just spend a lot of time, precious energy, projecting all of our own demons onto people on the other side of the fence. And here I am thinking that I'm somehow pure and holy and clean and speaking the truth. But this other person that likes Biden or likes Trump or whatever, he is evil, utterly and thoroughly through and through. Because they have the different opinion. I think it's pretty clear that this handful of people at the top, at the upper echelons of society, they can only stay in power as long as those a little bit further down fight between each other. And this is why the culture wars is the bread and circus of the 21st century. It keeps us entertained with moral virtue and outrage so that the true game, which is monetary policy, gets to be untouched. And I've wanted to address this topic for a while, but Bill Maher just hosted Russell Brand as a guest, together with an MSNBC journalist by the name of John Heinemann, I think. And this is really a great example of a person who is deeply in the trenches of the culture war. That would be Heinemann of MSNBC, who is on the left and is so virtuous. And all of his colleagues are so wonderful and cannot tell a smidge of propaganda. And then you have Russell Brand, who for whatever heroic reasons that he has to have really woken up to this in a very impressive way that has converted a lot of people on the right over to being fans of him. He has managed to zoom out, out of this myopic focus on you are bad and I'm good, and actually seeing that both sides of the culture wars are complicit in this malarkey. So if you're here for that, let's dive in. Now, before I give the floor to Russell Brand, I just want to say that I'm very impressed with the journey that he's been on over the last couple of years. Seems to me to be a heroic quest towards truth. To be able to transcend party lines and divisions in the way that he has, and becoming able to speak to an audience on both the left and the right of the culture wars, and to bring them together beyond the divide across the bridge that separates the two into a more unified view of the world, a more transcendent view of the world, he has just become very impressive. So without further ado, I'm going to yield the floor to Russell Brand, speaking truth to somebody who is completely captured by the culture wars. John, I've not known you long, but mm. I love you already. But I have to say that it's, <laughs> it's disingenuous to claim that the biases that are exhibited on Fox News are any different from the biases exhibited on MSNBC. It's difficult to suggest that's, that's... that these corporations operate as anything other than mouthpieces for their affiliate owners in BlackRock and Vanguard. And, and unless we start to embrace, and, and also, mate, like just spiritually, if I may use that word in your great country, we have to take responsibility for our own perspective. I, I've been on that MSNBC, yeah, mate. It was right. propagandist nutcrackery yeah. you're, you're on there. Having, you, I went on the show called Morning Joe. Yeah. It was absurd the way they carried <laughs> Good on. Morning Joe. Yes, yeah, it, I don't it. know what it was. It wasn't morning. There was no one called Joe there. No one could concentrate. They didn't understand the basic tenets of ju journalism. No one was willing to stick up for genuine American heroes uh, like Edward Snowden. No one was willing to talk about Julian Assange and what he suffered trying to bring real journalism to the American people and I think to sit within the castle of MSNBC throwing rocks oh. at Fox News is ludicrous. My friends, Make my MSNBC friend. better. My Make friend. MSNBC my great friend. again. My friend, I would love, I would, the moment the moment. Why is on a territory right. you can win on, Joe? Well, Russell, Russell, darling, um, the moment that you give me a specific example 
An actual example. Okay, I'll give you oh, one. Wait, just wait. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Just wait. Just a specific example. I'm about. Wait, 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 let, let me tell you what the specific example I'd like to hear of. I'd like to hear a specific example, a provable specific example of an MSNBC correspondent or anchor being on television saying something they knew was false and we're saying behind the scenes to people somebody's this is, triggered I'm about to go out and we know that we know that the election wasn't stolen you or something equivalent this example, but i will go I but i will go saying. out but i will go out on television and say the okay. opposite i will lie when's I'll, my answer we, we give, just give me a give me the specific example <laughs> I understand the basic okay. point. give me a specific I, I, example I, 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 all right, all right. I'm with you. I think it's a false equivalency, Russell. It's a false equivalency. It's a false It's not I, about bias. It's a false equivalency because you don't <clears> actually know anything about any of these organizations you're talking about. Even on MSNBC ones. Big fucking deal. My darling, you, it was more than enough. Up, you can't come it was such a chaos. You don't have a single, you have a single actual no. fact. Do you want an example? Do yep, you yes. want an example? Yes. The ludicrous, outrageous criticisms of Joe Rogan around ivermectin, deliberately referring to it as a horse not, medicine when they know it's an effective not medicine. Yeah, you know, that, that's what not a Rachel example. Maddow turning up on the TV not saying, not if you take well, this vaccine, you're not going to get it, when it hadn't been clinically trialed to transmission. You have to listen. Wait. Do you think you can improve response. America I by determinedly be and avowedly condemning Fox News without acknowledging that you're participating in the same game. I'm... Did you not just listen to Bernie <laughs> Sanders, someone who plainly legitimately believes in this country and believes it's possible to change, but is bound by corruption, is bound by the lobbying system? Surely it's clear to you, Bill, as one of the great pundits and experts and comic voices that systemic change is required. Money has to be taken out of politics. We need new political systems that genuinely represent ordinary Americans so that we can overcome cultural differences. And bickering about which propagandist network is the worst is not going to save a single American life, not improve the life of a single American child, not going to improve America's standing in the world. And the world needs a strong America. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. Yeah, I'm with the audience. And listen to the audience, like they are practically on their feet cheering him on. So clearly they agree with Mr. Brandt here. And John Heinemann, whose very presence, the being of this man, radiates dishonesty. And of course, he's representing a news network that is taking the act of deception and lies to the next level, while at the same time accusing Fox News for being liars and deceivers and all of these things. He doesn't realize, I don't think, or maybe he's just playing his part really well, he doesn't realize that he is right in the middle of the culture wars, blaming the other side for the exact same thing he is doing himself. This is the painful reality when people become brainwashed. They become so fragmented through propagandist messages that split us apart psychologically and make us confused about what is real, what is not. We're absorbing some news over here and some news over here and we're trying to fit the two together, but they don't fit. So we have to like create this psychic schism inside of us like a, a reality split where we now we now live in a split reality and we cannot actually find peace in this in this this way at all in the world you know so now we become these uh fractured beings that really need some very simple belief system to religiously adhere to so that we can feel that we are redeemed and saved this is what the culture wars is all about. So whether you are on the left champion, championing abortions and you think after school Satan clubs are, you know, wonderful, which, well, this is spreading. And I personally find it completely insane, <laughs> but, but they're popular now, I take it. Or you're somebody on the right who's just like really, really rigid religiously and just want to punish everyone who's breaking the laws and so on and so forth it's the same it's like we get possessed by the god of war and then we think we are justified in whatever evils we want to propagate on the world and it doesn't matter if i'm on the left or on the right russell brand is really on it with a lot of the things that he talks about in the world and the this idea 
for instance, that uh, the, if you're on the right now, you are somehow a domestic terrorist or you're a right-wing extremist. That very idea is absolutely ridiculed through the very fact that people on the left have been championing the Azov Battalion and other ultra-nationalist battalions in Ukraine for the last year. Literal Nazis. So we have people on the left who think that they're anti-right-wing extremism, who think literal Nazis, probably the only significant Nazi presence that is operating in broad daylight in the world, you know, they think those people are great. So this is how we break down internally to heal the culture wars in just this particular narrow little sense-making tidbit of Nazism would be to realize, no, it's not actually okay to be Nazis in Ukraine either. And then the person who thinks they're on the left and is a good person, they can actually wake up to the fact that, no, actually, I am a lot of the things that I'm accusing other people of. Similarly for people on the right. Now, people on the right, in large part, are also celebrating Nazi battalions in Ukraine. Now let's look at World War II that practically the whole West thinks was the West conquering the Nazis, right? And ever since, Nazis have been the worst kind of stain on somebody's reputation that they're a Nazi. It's horrible. You want, you don't, it's, it's the worst slur that you can have thrown at you. It's the worst. But the Western corporations actually supported the Nazi war machine. Because ultimately, under the surface, it's always about money and monetary policy. And then you have this pretend theater of us versus them on the surface. But no, Ford and Coca-Cola and JP Morgan and all kinds of IBM, all kinds of corporations and banks were operating in Nazi Germany for monetary gain. And once the Allies supposedly won the Second World War, do you think that they put all of the Nazis in jail? No, of course they didn't. The United States, through a CIA operation named Operation Paperclip, they took 1,600 of those Nazis, brought them to the US, and gave them high-ranking positions, even leadership of organizations like NASA, and the United Nations, they've been working inside of NATO and the EU. So Nazis have been really in power pretty much everywhere since World War II. Under the surface, the monetary forces that don't care anything about ethics and morals have been placing these, these Nazis in key positions. So then the us versus them scenario starts to become a bit hollow. But it has reached fever pitch in the 21st century with the culture wars. Again, it's a psyop. As long as we're stuck in the culture wars paradigm of left versus right, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. We don't get to look at the deeper issues. And that's why the culture wars are so important to a certain select handful of people of a rather unseemly character. And it is why it is so hopeless to be somebody like John Heileman and think that he's on the left side and thus good. There are no morals and ethics in these businesses anymore. And I think it's wonderful to see somebody as eloquent and as charismatic as Russell Brandt to just point that out in front of the world and have the audience cheer. Yeah, I'll tell you that. We start to get what the real game is now and how the game is really played and rigged. And that is why it is time to realize once and for all that the culture wars are a psyop so that we can reunite across the separation lines and become free once again. Now, if you enjoyed this video, click like and help the YouTube algorithm pick it up. And also subscribe to this channel if you want more content like this. You can even enable the little bell icon to be notified whenever I publish a new video. And if you want to be part of a challenge I just put out, a 30 days without sugar challenge, then check out this video just up here and find the rules and join the challenge to improve your life this month. 
It's been a pleasure. I will see you soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.